Why did you come up there? Excuse me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the August 10, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. Uh, first, we are going to have the approval of Memorandum of Understanding, number one, for Local 2664. Also move. Second. Do we want to have a discussion? You want the no. memorandum read? All those in favor? Well, yeah. you want the memorandum read for the public to understand. Would you like to read it? Please do. I need, yeah, here it is. Bear with me. <clears throat> okay, it's an agreement made the sixth day of August 2015 by and between the Hampton Board of Selectmen hereafter the town and the Hampton Firefighters Local 2664 IAFF here and after the union and jointly referred to as the parties. Whereas the parties are signatories to a collective bargaining agreement dated April 1, 2014 and whereas the collective bargaining agreement provides an Article 11 for promotions by competitive examination, and whereas the Hampton Fire Department currently has a vacancy in the position of fire prevention officer, and whereas only one candidate from the union has applied for this position, and whereas the parties jointly deem it in the best interest of the department to fill this vacancy as soon as possible, now therefore the parties agree. One, to waive the requirement that this vacancy be filled by the promotional process provided for in Article 11 of the Collective Bargaining Agreement. And number two, agree that this waiver is made solely in this instant situation and may not be relied upon for precedence or future vacancies. Wherefore, the parties intending to be bound by their mutual promises affix the signatures of their authorized agents. And Matthew Newton, the president of local 2664 IAFF, has signed. And there is a place for the chairman, and Mr. Griffin, to sign for the board. OK. All those, All in, those favor. in favor? Uh, four in favor and one abstention. Next, we have local 3017. Did you want to read it again? Um, I think the language is exactly the same, exactly Mr. Chairman, the same. with the exception of that it's Article 12 and it deals with the deputy chief position, but it's the exact same point, if that'll Signed by Captain out. McMahon. Correct. So moved. Okay. Does someone want to second it? I'll second it. All those in favor? Four and one abstention. Next, we're going to move on to the oath of office. Please join us. <laughs> From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to William Payne of Hampton, New Hampshire in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of fire prevention officer in said town, and whereas we the subscribers have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said William Payne as fire prevention officer of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers to perform the duties and be subject to the liabil liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 10th day of August, 2015, Fred Welsh, town manager. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, William Payne. I, William Payne. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As fire prevention officer. As fire prevention officer. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you.
Good evening. Welcome and thank you very much for coming. Tonight we're going to have Kathy Payne pin the badge on Bill Payne. Bill's been with the Hampton Fire Department since the year 2000. He comes to us as one of the most qualified candidates that anybody in recent memory could even think about. Uh, as a construction supervisor, as a firefighter, as an all-around great guy. We expect great things from him and um, I know it's going to happen. So, ma'am. Congratulations, Bill. Think of all those exciting inspections. I am. Bill <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> I like. Are you? <laughs> From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to William Kennedy of Stratham, New Hampshire in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of Deputy Fire Chief in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said William Kennedy, as Deputy Fire Chief of said town, and upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers to perform the duties and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. <coughs> Given under my hand this 10th day of August 2015, Fred Welch, Town Manager. Please raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I, William Kennedy. I, William Kennedy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As deputy fire chief. As deputy fire chief. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. as the acting deputy since November and doing an excellent job. So tonight, <laughs> and, <I'll recognize> that. <laughs> and mom. And mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> 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 okay. I gave that to you. Okay. I'd like to thank Chief Ayotte for having faith in me and the both town managers for approving it and the Board of Selectmen for everything that they've done for me. I appreciate it. And to all my brethren here that came to see me, thank you very much. I'll try to do you all proud and try to live up to the reputation of the Hampton Fire Chief. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. We're glad, you know, we appreciate your we're glad that it's all doing, going so well and we're in good hands. Appreciate it. How you doing? Thank you. 
Next, we're going to have public comment. Mrs. Moore, you're first, I believe. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> Betty Moore, um, I'm with the Hampton Historical Society, and I've come tonight to talk about a couple of events. First of all, I want to mention that last July 18th, we had our 90th celebration, and it was a huge success. We had over 200 people attending, and I'd like to thank all the different organizations who came and spent the afternoon with us from Experience Hampton to the Masonic Lodge to local authors, the Winnicana Alumni Association, Parks and Rec, the library staff, Experience Hampton, we had even Vikings. And just because all those people came, it made the afternoon really special. Now on August 22nd, we are having another kind of celebratory event. And uh, it's thanks to the cooperation of the Hampton Conservation Commission, we're going to do a marsh walk. And Ellen Gaithel will be leading us. We'll start at the museum and uh, we'll carpool to a site and uh, take a walk and uh, learn about this wonderful marsh that's right outside our door. There is a cost for this. It's $10 for adults and $5 for students. Um, the other thing that's coming up is our annual pig roast on September 5th. It's our 14th year, and this is the way we raise the money to keep the museum going. Tickets are $20 and $10 for students. Uh, children eight and under are free. And we have this uh, wonderful event, homemade desserts, homemade baked beans. Um, the salads are provided by area restaurants. We have a wonderful silent auction. And um, Chairman Griffin is our 50-50 raffle person who every year outdoes himself. So we're looking forward to great things again with him this year. And on September 13th, we're doing our harvest repast at the museum, which is another um, kind of community event and we talk about the herb garden that's there. Um, for more information, people can just Google us on Hampton Historical Society and get all the facts. So thank you very much. Thank you and thank you all for all that you do over there. Any other public comment this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Bridal? Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Bill Kennedy and, and Fire Prevention Officer Billy Payne I've known both of these guys since they started their careers in the Hampton Fire Department. And both of these guys will continue to do an excellent job and provide top quality service to the town of Hampton. I'd also like to send our condolences to the family of retired police officer Robert Campbell, who passed away a little over a week ago. Um, officer Campbell was a, a longtime police officer here uh, who retired a number of years ago and was um, killed in a, in a motorcycle accident a little over a week ago and send the condolences to his family. I'd also like to send the condolences to the family of Hampton businessman Bill McGuirk. Bill and his family have always supported their Hampton community and he will sorely be missed by his friends and family and also my family. And I'd also like to send a get well to Arthur Moody who I heard is a little under the weather this week. Mrs. Wellesley. Uh, yes, I drove up the uh, new Exeter Road. It's nice not to fall into potholes. Um, there were a couple of concerns on the side about drainage, but I will say as I went up Exeter Road westbound, I'm still seeing a lot of houses that don't have street numbers on them. So I may be nagging on street numbers for a while. It is important for your emergency services that your house show where you are. 
Mr. Bean. No, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Wardell. Yes, I'd like to congratulate the two firefighters, too. And I also would like to say that it always says something about the town when we have promotions within the fire department or the police department and all the other employees show up to support them. I think there's a lot of support and a lot of camaraderie in both those departments, and I think that's that's really says something, something positive. Um, I would like to congratulate both men and the chief for doing a great job over there. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to the consent agenda. Number one, taxi bus um, business. Two, parade and public gathering license. Three, request for no objection on insurance for liquor license. For issuance of liquor license. <clears throat> Outside. And that's, uh, what, who is that for? Cracky Figs, 822 Lafayette Road. It's a form of Ford's restaurant. Yeah. Ford's, it's right. under new management? I believe yes. so. Oh. Or will be. And <clears throat> number four is seafood festival vendor's license. Uh, and we have quite a few of those. Does someone want to make that motion? I'll make a motion. We accept the consent agenda. I'll second it. I have a question on... 2A. Sm I see Smutty Nose's half marathon is squashed in there, and it's showing once again High Street, Little River Road, etc., uh, annoying the neighborhood. Uh, I don't know whether you want to pull that out for a separate vote. I have no problem with the rest of the consent agenda, but I have no intention of voting for another one of those races. Okay, we can take that out. And for everything but n number 2A. Do we ha we have the motion? So all those in favor? Unanimous. And then, um, would you like to make a motion? I'll move to deny the um, half marathon unless they change that route. And that's scheduled for October um, 4th, 2015. Do we have a second? Seeing none. I'll make a motion that we approve the smutty nose. Second. Rock All those America. in favor? I'm opposed. Four and one opposed. Next, we have the approval of minutes for July 27, 2015 public session. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. I'm just trying to find my copy here. Second. I have two small corrections. Anybody second? I second it. Okay, on page six, about halfway down, um, let's see, uh, we're talking to, to Jude David, how many paid staff do you have, et cetera. If you drop down to the bottom line in that paragraph, are you still putting, it says our constraints, it should say out, putting out constraints, that should be O-U-T. And then on page, 10 of 11, uh, down under new business, sewer access fund, the bottom paragraph, the last line, <coughs> the replacement drive for the raw, it shouldn't be an affluent sewer pump, it should be an effluent sewer pump. So we'll get rid of the A and put an E, please, because I haven't met an affluent sewer pump yet, but I hope to. <laughs> you never know. All those in favor? Unanimous. Mm -hmm. For the July 27, 2015, non public. So I want to make a motion. I'll make a motion. We accept. I second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, under appointments, we have Fire Chief Ayotte. Departmental update. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you busy very much. Tonight. It is a busy night. <laughs> I'd appreciate uh, this. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you for allowing us to come in and celebrate, bringing our family into um, this forefront. It's extremely important to not only the community, I think, the fire department, and also their families. So I do appreciate it. Before I begin tonight, I'm going to ask the indulgence of Mr. Waddell. Uh -huh. If you don't mind, sir, there is uh, a couple of things here that I'd like to pass up. Each one. One of each, one of each, okay. and one of each with. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> My apologies for not doing so in advance. We'll forgive you this time. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, I would like to thank you very much for allowing us to bring in Fire Prevention Officer William Payne and Deputy Fire Chief William Kennedy and their families in. Uh, the formal ceremony is a very meaningful time in their lives. Uh, it's being recognized for hard work. It's also being recognized that they're getting greater responsibility. And it's important for the families to understand that there's a role in transition that they're going to be serving in a different capacity. They get to see that. Deputy Kennedy will transition into a new role, but he's been performing this role since November. Uh, he was named Acting Deputy Fire Chief. He's performed admirably, admirably throughout that time in a time of great uncertainty in our fire department. Um, his experience and leadership abilities are great assets to the community and to the department. Fire Officer, Fire Prevention Officer Bill Payne is coming into a new position. Completely changed from the actions of a firefighter. Mr. Waddell and I have had a conversation uh, both online and offline about firefighting as a reactive force. And generally, the idea of fire prevention is proactive, and Bill's becoming a proactive firefighter now. Um, this is not unfamiliar to him, this role. He's a construction supervisor. Uh, he owned his own company as the CEO of the company, and he's worked in Hampton for 15 years. The FPO, as we all know, is the public face of our fire department in the business community. They're responsible for preventing fires, and this is a proactive position. I've been here before speaking, and often loudly, about the fire department team we're creating. With the new additions of the Deputy Fire Chief and the Fire Prevention Officer, we're adding two very competent people that embrace the team concept wholeheartedly. I'm very extremely proud, as a matter of fact, of Hampton Fire Rescue. As a whole, our team is doing very well. That said, we still have some that are recovering from various medical ailments. Uh, several members continue to recover from various surgeries, and we hope to have one return at the end of the month. Since we last met, a lot has happened. We last met early May. We received news that firefighter Kyle Jamison was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, he has met this condition head on, and he has the most positive attitude imaginable. He has an indomitable spirit. He has had five rounds of chemotherapy and has one remaining. Uh, he's scheduled to receive a stem cell transplant in late September, and he has beaten back this disease and been told he's in remission. This, this outstanding news comes at a very opportune time because uh, he became a new dad on June 24th as Mr. and Mrs. Mom and Dad Jameson welcomed the baby boy. Uh, we move forward with the purchase of a new Pierce fire engine pumper and we'll begin the process of building in early September. We've gotten word on that. We've been quite busy as a service. In fact, when we spoke in February, I told you that this was a banner year, 2014. And 2014 was an all-time highest year for call volume. We're beating our last year's numbers. Our year-to-date numbers for fire calls are 1,386, and for EMS, 1,428. This is an increase of 12% over last year for fire-related calls and 2% for EMS. This comes at a time when the weather is not necessarily summery. We certainly did have wintry uh, this year, but we didn't have full-on heat waves, and we're still beating our call volume. Fire prevention has been exceptionally busy. I've provided you with a copy of the spreadsheet we use, and we can go over it if you like, or if you'd just like to peruse it. Um, this is the spreadsheet that we use to track open projects. This is a system I described to you in May, uh, which allows us to visualize the work that needs to be performed while maintaining a log of what we have done in our completed jobs. As you can see, there's a great deal of activity as new projects are coming online, construction's taking place, and inspections for permits of assembly have been occurring. The daily ask of issuing fire alarm and sprinkler work continues. If you take one drive up and down uh, the strip these days, you will notice that there is a significant amount of construction. In February, we came before you uh, to change the fee schedule that had not been revised for several years at best. The change was based on information gathered from several communities, we used five, and we made, the, um, we made the cost of permitting commensurable to the work required with a review and inspection. Based on the new fee schedule that the board has adopted, we've seen a rise in revenue. From January 1st, 2015 through February 6th, 2015, fire prevention received $425 from permitting. Since the new fee schedule was adopted, the revenue received from February 11th, 2015 through today is $7,402 for a total of $7,827. This is a large jump, but the value can be judged by the work product that the consumer is receiving. I'd like to close with a report about a call for service that occurred on July 30th, 2015. Hampton Fire Rescue received a call from the United States Coast Guard Portsmouth Station 
requesting assistance with a medical emergency approximately three miles offshore off the coast of Hampton on a disabled boat. Hampton Fire Rescue dispatched Engine 2 and Ambulance 2 to Marine 1, located at the Public Safety Pier in Hampton Harbor. Marine 1 responded with Lieutenant Brian Weiser, Paramedic James Squires, and Firefighter Damien Seven, Firefighter Dean Sonis, uh, to the last no lone, known location of the vessel. There they found a 51-year-old male complaining of chest pain. Marine One's crew removed the patient from the disabled vessel under moderate surf conditions. They began treating the patient inside the cabin, and a full cardiac workup was completed, including a 12-lead EKG. Marine One got on the way back to the public safety pier, and while en route, paramedic squires interpreted the 12-lead EKG and accurately identified that the patient was having an acute inferior myocardial infarction. This information was radioed to the ambulance crew waiting at the pier to take the patient to the hospital. A code STEMI, which stands for STMI, okay, or um, uh, ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, uh, was declared and firefighter paramedic Don Tebow and firefighter Seth Butler made the notification to the Exeter Hospital, alerting the cardiac cath team. Once Marine One arrived at the pier, remember this is a three mile out transfer, uh, the 12 lead EKG was transmitted to the hospital using a Wi-Fi hotspot connection that we have in the ambulance. <clears throat> the crew that day provided excellent patient care as well as e expert seamanship, which made a marked difference in this patient's life. Dr. Tom Wharton, a cardiologist at the Exeter Hospital, noted that because of blood work was completed, the patient had received an IV, aspirin, nitroglycerin, fentanyl, and heparin in a pre-hospital setting, and the crew transmitted a 12 lead EKG and called a code STEMI in a timely manner, that patient was brought directly to the cardiac cath lab and had interventions performed very rapidly. The hospital looks to conduct all of these procedures and intervene in under 90 minutes. They refer to this as the door to balloon time. The door to balloon time for this patient was 29 minutes. That's pretty outstanding when you consider the fact that this guy was three miles out on a disabled vessel and he was taken to the hospital and in less than an hour had the vessel reopened. That's an amazing completion of work there. Those guys did a tremendous job. So I thank them for their, um, their hard work, and I thank you for the opportunity, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. If you have any on this, I provided you with a call as well. There's a copy of the call. Sir, I can get you a copy, Mr. Sullivan. Of course. Um, there's the, the lists that we have for spreadsheets. You also see a cost breakdown of the permits. So any of it. Yeah, in all the years I've been here, to me the most amazing part of the fire department is the emergency services that you provide. And I think you do an outstanding job. I'm glad you pointed that out in the minutes. Um, I know from the first um, time I was selectman, it was Hampton had the, the lowest, the fastest response time of anyone in the state of New Hampshire, and it was faster than anywhere in Massachusetts, too. So I'm glad to see that this tradition Are you telling me my continues. guy's speeding, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Talk to Chief Sawyer on that one, aren't you? <laughs> Let's just say they get around. They do. Yeah. They do a tremendous job, for sure. No, yeah. Excellent job with the ambulance call and an excellent job with your report. Thank you. Yeah. Mrs. Wolseley. Outstanding report. And I did have a question from a constituent, which I was going to ask you, but you're psychic and you anticipated uh, asking for an update on the uh, fee receipts, which are great. Um, I'm going to bore you very briefly with a little history because as a parent of four children in 1976, that board of selectmen was discussing removing the ambulance service, the rescue service from the um, fire department. So I marched into what was then the uptown station in the basement of the old courthouse, God love them, and I said, what can I do? Oh, stupid me. Um, <laughs> since that time, and we had uh, uh, firefighters uh, Chenard and Ballou and uh, Tommy Cotts and Dennis McGowan. I will never forget those four magnificent firefighters. And I will say that if they were sitting here today, how proud they would be of what this department has done and how proud I am. That you, that you have done on the emergency and, and the ambulance service. So that's a long way back, but we saved the day. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief, great job tonight, great leadership, great uh, personnel selection. Uh, your department has uh, performed in magnificent and sterling fashion this year. Uh, your 
very well experienced. Your selection as chief uh, heralds great praise and and uh, scintillating capability with our town manager and uh, our assistant town manager. And uh, those decisions were uh, reinforced and executed by them. Your ambulance service, your professionalism, your fire protection. There were there were parts of uh, the organization that were under stress in this last year, and uh, you'll make those soon forgotten. And as we get into uh, the budget season coming up, uh, there often is a clamor about uh, a flat tax rate. Uh, there's never talk of value. There's never talk uh, of capability. There's never talk of product. And uh, when you do offer these uh, very important data points, these incident responses, these life-saving measures, this uh, harmony that is developed in the community with your, your fire protection efforts and your promotions uh, tonight at the leadership ladder. Uh, congratulations, job well done. Thanks, sir. Yes. And Mr. Bean made sure he could take advantage of all services by moving in right across the street. <laughs> we love it. Uh, uh, Mr. Wardell. Yes, uh, congratulations. Thank you. And I love to see this uh, spreadsheet with all this complete, 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 Me complete. I mean, that, <laughs> that for so long was incomplete, incomplete, sure. or just ignore 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 so I think that's really good and congratulations on the uh, marine one because I know I'm on the water all the time sure. and it's, it's not it's not easy to, to do a rescue on the water and to get somebody and get them back so quickly and stuff so what a great job they did on that congratulations and on the increased revenue that's a great thing to hear also so congratulations thank you just this is Wolseley. I, I shared with the chief Friday uh, when I bumped into him at, at Fred's office. Uh, when I went to the Dread presentation, their first presentation of the summer, uh, I told him that when we were leaving, I was surrounded by individuals who live at the beach. And all they could say to me is how wonderful, how wonderful the chief is. We're getting inspections. We're getting businesses open. We're getting things done. So, uh, but now maybe you won't have to inspect. Well, now you've got help. a designee. I have yeah. help, and I can tell you that I am just over the moon with this guy. He's going to be fantastic. Yeah. We're going to love it. Well, you had a lot of happy people, I'll tell you, down at the beach, really. Agreed. And all I can say is I like your leadership style. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Thank you very much. Absolutely. If I can end on one more note, um, I'd like to bring something in, and as Jamie likes to say, we'd like to close the circle on this. Uh -huh. um, you know, this call, we had to do a 12 lead kg. And from the boat, as you might imagine, I said moderate surf. If you've ever been out in moderate surf, when my guys say moderate surf, most of us would be very sick, okay? These guys consider moderate surf to be six and eight foot swells, that sort of thing. So they did an amazing job. They got a 12 lead EKG. They were able to transmit it to the hospital. First and foremost, they got it. Second, they were able to interpret it. Wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for your help because with the new monitors, we were able to do it. Before that, that wouldn't have been possible. Wow. So this absolutely comes into play there as well. So I'd like to just bring that full circle. So thank you for that. Thank you all very much for your time this evening, and thank you for allowing us to bring in our guys. Have a great night. Thank, thank you. you. Come back anytime. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Next, we have Jay Diener, Conservation Commission. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for taking the time to see me this evening. I appreciate it. I'm here to talk about the conservation coordinator salary, and I have a proposal for you. Um, but before I get into the details of that, I'd like to give you a little bit of background. Um, I came to you folks uh, shortly after town meeting this year and in public comment said that I think we have a problem in that our non-union town employees are not getting adequate compensation, adequate raises when the budget is not passed. Um, in Hampton, in the last 17 years, we've passed the budget four times. So there's an awful lot of years that go by when these hardworking employees aren't adequately compensated or, or given increases for the work that they do. Um, Mr. Chairman, you told me that you would address that issue, and true to your word, you did. Um, later on during the season, there was a vote taken to um, approve increases for some of the town employees who are non-union employees, but that applied only to those employees who report directly to the Board of Selectmen. 
Um, there are at least five employees that I'm aware of that are not in that category. They are non-union employees. They don't report to the Board of Selectmen, so they were excluded from that group. And one of those is the conservation coordinator, and, and that's where my issue is. Um, I worked... I, I made myself a pain in the neck to the town manager and to the town attorney and, and to the finance director trying to find ways that we could reward these employees for the work that they do, whether or not the budget is passed. Um, I think that most people in the town of Hampton, when they look at the budget, when they're looking at that um, ballot and they look at the budget, they don't really think in terms of employee salary increases. They're thinking in terms of the overall number and what impact that's going to have on their, on their tax rate, on their property taxes. Um, and that's the way I look at it, too. Um, but it's not fair to those employees, so I, I was trying to find a way that we could strike a middle ground. So we looked at different language that we could put into our budget that might address that issue. But if the budget isn't passed, it doesn't make any difference what the language is. It's, it's not passed. Um, I went to the DRA and I spoke with them. And they came up with um, the concept of a non-union bargaining agreement um, that we might be able to put in place for this employee, for the conservation coordinator. And I went back to Fred with that, and he said, you can't do that for one employee. Um, it has to be a group of employees, and they have to have certain things in common. So that wouldn't wash. I also spoke to the municipal association, and, and we talked about the possibility of putting together a warrant article in which we would specify for a five-year period exactly what the increase would be for this person for each of those five years. Presumably, if that warrant article passed, then regardless of what happened with the budget, that that person would get those increases for those five years. However, if the warrant article doesn't pass, I wouldn't be able to do anything for the following year, for 2016, and depending on how the warrant article is interpreted, we may not be able to do anything for any of those five years. So personally, I have issues with, with giving raises via warrant article anyway, but taking the risk of not being able to give a person a raise for five years to me was just totally impractical. Um, so the only thing that I could come up with that I think is going to work with your help, and I'd like to ask you to pass these around, sure. is a mid-season salary increase. Um, <clears throat> and so that's what I'm here to propose this evening. Um, the conservation coordinator has not received an increase since 2013, so I'm proposing a 3% increase, meaning 1.5% each for the years of 2014 and 2015. That comes to a total of 56 cents per hour. Um, assuming we can put this into place sometime this month, I, I figured that for 18 weeks remaining in the year, that would come to a total of $292.32 which we can accommodate within our budget, so we wouldn't have to take any additional funds out of, out of the town general fund. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer to go through the normal process of having raises as part of the budget, <clears throat> but the budget doesn't get passed. And as a result, our employees suffer, and I don't think it's fair to our employees. So I'm asking for your permission to institute this mid-year salary increase for the conservation coordinator. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any question that the coordinator is doing an excellent job. When she started, the job was purely to work with the public in helping them to fill out applications for wetlands permits and for state DES permits. The job has increased pretty dramatically since then. It includes a lot of public outreach. She's now working with the town planner on FEMA's um, uh, um, CRS rating. The CRS, or, yeah. thank you, community service uh, program. Um, she attends all of the PRC meetings. Um, she reviews documents in town. I think she does an excellent job of communicating both with the yeah. town public as well as the department heads 
that she deals with in, in the town. So I don't think there's a question of whether mm -hmm. or not the, the increase is earned. It's just a question of how we can make it happen. Okay, and why don't we bring this back and let's hear what Fred has to say about it. And I'm just gonna go out there and say this too. I would like to take this under consider to consideration and for us to talk about it later because I'd like to know about the other five people. Or if she's one of five people or is there five others? Um, I'm aware of five others, two employees in the planning department, uh, the town clerk, <coughs> the, um, uh, the head of the tax department, and I believe the town treasurer. Mm -hmm. I think that I'd rather talk about this. Uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say. To it, it, yeah. You know, yeah, I think we'd rather talk about this in private. Okay. But we'll, this, we'll have your, you put this out there and let's hear what Fred has to say. I think you ought to talk about it. <clears throat> it's, it's, a, it's an issue, uh, and I've, I've heard a number of uh, issues brought up re with regards to all of these particular offices simply because um, every time we have a, a warrant uh, uh, for a budget that doesn't pass, just about every time, something has to give somewhere along the line. Uh, we're getting disproportionately uh, rearranged on our salary levels between what we pay and what other communities for the same service pay. Um, now, there are some things that could be done that are, that are a little bit novel, but uh, sometimes done in other, other communities. But this is one way to address this particular individual employee. Uh, and there may be as unique ways to address the others. So I think the board needs, as the, the board's the controller of the purse. <clears throat> so they need to um, sit down and talk about these five different employees and the different circumstances for each one and then come to some informed decision. Okay, Mr. Brattle, do you want to I, say something? I agree we need to talk about the other, other five. I, I think that's, uh, that some, of, some of those have been long overdue. I have no problem recommending this right now. Uh, and moving forward with it. So, mm -hmm. if, I, if I may add, um, I tried to come up with a solution in, in speaking with the town manager and mm -hmm. DRA and the municipal association that would be universal in that we could apply it to all five of these employees. Mm -hmm. I can't find one. That's why I'd rather sit and talk about it before we do it for this one person, but that's where I'm coming from. Sure. Mrs. Wolsey. I want to make a generic comment. Um, I, <clears throat> I appreciate the work you've done on this. Um, three of the individuals are elected officials, so it's not up to us to uh, designate any type of salary increases for them. That's the Budget Committee's job, or they have the latitude to petition for their salary, which was done routinely in the past. The town clerk and so forth, uh, <coughs> and, and the treasurer put in warrant articles. So that's the way for the tax collector, town clerk, and uh, whatever uh, treasurer to approach the salary raises or not and that's a clean way to connect with the public on those issues for the planning board individuals the chairman of the planning board would have to make a request I would think as you're making a, a request in behalf of conservation you don't want to do a five-year article particularly not talking about getting a pay raise for a person You'd want to talk always in terms of a position, of course, and it because would be in the person may be position. gone, Absolutely. and then you get the five-year thing, and then you're stuck. Absolutely. So, um, I have no problem with what you are proposing. This may be an annual appearance for you. Uh, certainly, the conservation coordinator has um, uh, is worth her weight in. Well, maybe not gold, but, <laughs> but 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 some kind of currency, and she's really outstanding. And I had one person say to me, in conjunction with having a rain garden put in, that the uh, conservation commission, uh, the conservation coordinator, get in there, and she was digging with a shovel, and that she doesn't, she does hands on, and I have great respect for her. So I would say case by case, and you may end up in here every year, or the conservation uh, chairman, whoever. <laughs> But for the time being, um, we're stuck. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support your uh, uh, intent to raise the salary to, by $292.32 for the remainder of the year. And I support uh, the chairman's position that he wants to uh, take this under consideration and, and discuss it soon and get back to you yeah. soon. Thank you. Yeah. 
What I'm suggesting is that we get the information about everyone and we sit down and uh, before the next meeting that we have, come in an hour early and discuss this so that it, whatever's going to happen happens the next time. That's what I'd like to see happen. But uh, yeah, I support this. I support the intent. I support the intent of the chairman also and uh, of, of doing something comprehensively and getting it done the proper the right way but I also think and I think people ought to start thinking that a little bit more cooperation will get budgets passed and I think we have mm -hmm. to start getting budgets passed and I think we have to stop being negative about budgets all the time and we have to we have to take into consideration the kinds of services that were being provided mm -hmm. and come up with a budget that's going to get past the town because in 17 years you only get four passed that doesn't say very much mm -hmm. and I, I think it's uh, I think it's time we we do things properly. And I'd like to make sure that everybody, that no one feels left out, that everybody, and I think now is a time when we, all the facts are in. In, in conjunction with, you'll have to contact Mr. Mac, Chairman McNamara of the Planning Board because uh, the other two positions that are uh, being discussed here are the two Planning Board positions. You have one on conservation, that's it. I'm not going to touch yeah. elected officials. See, the, pl the, uh, the town has never had, I, I don't, did, did we get to okay that, uh, the town planner? Did we okay it or did, it was completely done by the planning board. Planning board. The town, the position, mm -hmm. the position is out of the jurisdiction of yeah, the selectmen. No, I understand that, but they were the ones that uh, I was on the planning board, and we, they all deliberated and decided what the. They appointed the person. That's yeah, correct. But they decided what the pay raise was going to be. That is correct. Mm -hmm. and, and the pay and everything. Sure. But I, again, I think we should just s settle this once and for all so that we have an answer all the way, and I think we can have it within the next two weeks. That's how I would like to see it go. I think that's terrific. Um, you folks are Is that obviously okay very with smart you? people. You have a lot of lot of resources at your disposal. I would be delighted to um, have you work on this and come up with a solution yeah. that's and workable and, and that's agreeable to everybody. And everyone here at the table can get in touch with Fred or um, Jamie, or uh, Mr. Sullivan, and... Um, ask any questions that they have or they want to go with it in touch of the other departments and so that we, we maybe we can address this all together that would be great or we'll, we'll know who needs to address it in the future but just just to clarify excuse me one second sure. jay we're talking only the three positions two on planning and one on conservation and only related to this calendar year I'm talking about the five people no, he's no, discussed. No, 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 elected officials. We okay, don't well, that's what we're going to discuss over the next five weeks, well, the fi uh, two weeks. I understand that too, Mrs. Wilson. You're not teaching me anything, but I want to discuss this so that we have, it, we'll, we'll know where it's coming from the next time. We understand about uh, Mrs. Cipher's, you know, did put her warrant article or whatever, didn't she? She did. Yeah. So we're just going to deal with all these five people and see what we can recommend and what the procedure will be in the future so we can recommend it to them. Is that okay with everyone? Finally. As Mrs. Woolsey said, um, you know, if need be, I or whoever is the chair of the Conservation Commission could come back here every year and make the same request. Mm -hmm. But I'd really rather not. Well, that's what I mean. That we're going to so have. I appreciate yeah, that we're going to have a plan for that. A better we're, solution than that. Yes. Sometimes. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. It, it may be a situation that's going to have to happen today. Um, Moving on to the town manager's report, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, I want to add my congratulations to Jane Seifer for her graduation from the New England Municipal Clerks Institute and her designated as a certified municipal clerk from the International Institute of Municipal Clerks. Uh, I asked uh, Jane um, how many of these certifications internationally have ha been handed out, and there are less than 11,000. Wow. So that's a considerable number, considering the number of cities and towns in the world uh, who are eligible to apply for this and to work towards it. The selectmen and the citizens of Hampton are invited to the American Legion Post 35 on September 11th, 2015 at 6 p.m. for the rededication of the Global War on Terrorism Memorial Monument. That's going to be on uh, High Street, 68 High Street. 
I would request that the board appoint James Sullivan as the acting town manager from September 13th to September 21st, 2015, during my vacation period. Work continues on Exeter Road for pavement edge backup and other uh, fine uh, work by hand. Uh, and I will comment that uh, the paving company is coming back in within the next two weeks to do all of the entire um, area beside the roadway uh, with fine material and to roll it and place it in hand. Um, a thank you to everyone during the construction phase for their patience and understanding in getting this job done. And I'd like to also advise people to, uh, we're going to get a lot of rain tomorrow. <laughs> And uh, please drive carefully on Exeter Road. It's a brand new road. Uh, there are some oils involved in doing this and high speed. You could hydroplane and go off the road. We don't want any accidents. That's a bad idea. Um, At least the potholes held the car on the... The uh, potholes certainly held you in place and, and there's no question about the fact that uh, we're glad they're gone so we have brakes to hold us in place now. I was notified today by, the, uh, uh, by DREAD that uh, we are back to a normal cleaning of the beach. Uh, the plovers have fledged and they are gone. Uh, so they started uh, work, um, I believe he said Saturday, uh, raking the beach. Uh, no, last night, excuse me, Sunday. Uh, they raked the entire beach, so they will be now raking that on a regular basis. We also have um, a message from uh, the American Legion, from Ralph Fatello. Uh, that the 43rd war, uh, the, the Wounded Warriors Beach Day is going to be held again in Hampton. Uh, they obviously want participation from folks to, uh, to help with that. Uh, please feel free to get a hold of Ralph and uh, just see what you can do to help with that upcoming event. Um, I did talk to uh, Kelly O'Connor, the Assistant Town Manager in Seabrook, as you all remember, we had sent a letter last year to the board up there because we have a perambulation due this year. And uh, I received a response back that the board thinks the best time to do that would be after the seafood festival yeah. when things sort of calm down a little bit. Uh, and they'd like to uh, pick a date, preferably in the afternoon, uh, when they could run through it. There are only actually two bounds to be, to be done, but... Uh, uh, please tell me which one of the board or which of the board members want to go. I know Mary Louise says, uh, and uh, we'll get that done. And I will, uh, I'll, I'll get a date that uh, I'll throw some dates out for everybody to look at and see whether or not we can't get that done uh, sooner than later, right after the seafood festival, so it's finished and we can file it with the secretary of state. Um, the I, I did send a letter we had discussed the uh, the renewal of the fire dispatch agreement with Hampton Falls which has been extremely successful <coughs> for both of the communities over the years uh, the Hampton Falls selectmen uh, have said that they would be delighted to renew you folks have said you would be delighted to renew oh so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draft up the pro proper documents, put them before you for signature and send them to the Hampton Falls after you approve them and get them to sign it and we'll be off. This is a 2016 renewal, so we're, we're just trying to stay on top of this early so we, it doesn't pass and we don't miss it. So you'll be delighted to do that? I will be delighted to do that because I think it's the thing we should do. I did send all of you a very, very lengthy uh, email from um, Chris Jacobs dealing with uh, the Unitel Gas Company and their planned work on replacing yeah. tons and tons and tons and tons of uh, old steel uh, mains in town for gas. And uh, we, are, we are trying to watch this diligently uh, so this doesn't get out of hand. We're also trying to make it so that the work gets done and the roads get re-repaired as they should be. The last thing I have is uh, we, um, we had a, um, a piece of property that we took sometime in the past mm -hmm. at number 27 Pearl Street. Uh, we've attempted to get the prior owner to redeem that on at least four occasions at this point, and they've been unable to do that. Uh, it would be in the best interest of the town uh, for us to move forward in trying to sell the property as opposed to trying to keep property off the tax rolls. 
So I'm going to suggest after discussing this with town council uh, that the board of selectmen authorize the town manager as the board's designee to A under RSA 8089 uh, section one to give the required notice of intent to offer for sale to the former owner. And then B, after 90 days uh, from when the notice is issued, to sell at public auction the property at 27 Pearl Street that was deeded to the town by the tax collector's deed dated September 27, 2014 and recorded on October 3rd, 2014. I would suggest that as a motion from the board I'll so we can motion. get things in, in motion. I think it's September 23rd, not 27th. Oh, 23rd, right. Yeah. And I will second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Seeing none, all those in favor, unanimous. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Questions for the town manager, Mr. Bridal. I have nothing right now. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Wolseley. Ah. Um, now that the beach is being cleaned, Fred, did the state mention anything on the jetty? Because they are supposed to work on that this year. No, ma'am, they have given no information to us whatsoever. I would think they would be nice enough to give you some information on that. Uh, not that we haven't requested it, but I don't believe they're ready at this point. Um, on Unitil and the gas lines uh, right around the corner from my residence, of course, is Taylor Street, and they have, re they have run a new gas line, I believe. That's there. their intention is to replace all those old steel yeah. gas uh, lines. Either new or replacement, but they did a good job, and it really wasn't that bad for the neighborhood. They, they were fairly careful in how they worked. We just want to make sure that we, we don't get ahead of the repair mm -hmm. of the patches in the roadways. Mm -hmm. And we started to do that in a couple of instances where we had some problems yeah. on a couple of roads. So we we've, we've slowed them down just a little bit so that we can make sure those things get done yeah. and we don't end up with some problems. Yeah. And there is certainly, you know, extensive patching along the side oh, yes. of the road doing that. But they appear to have done a fairly good job. So good. hopefully um we won't have any safety concerns in north beach that you gave us the memo what what if anything are we doing or are we turning this over to the state for all the good that'll do uh we have turned it over to the state um we have uh, attempted to uh, advise uh, our public service agencies in the town of the individual situations uh those are generally beyond our control because they are on the state highway and yeah, the police okay. are aware of the fact that there may be a parking problem there and they are they are watching it okay i want to discuss this under old business that says uh, it's, oh, oh i'm not oh okay well, you it's not part of the town manager's report but oh, okay. i am wanting i'm still uh, on a roll here okay um, we'll keep it to the town manager's report <clears throat> okay then some of this i'll bring in under old okay group. business um okay well may i ask the manager if we can have a copy of the the information that mrs mckenzie gave on the seawalls the the information that she had saved that we didn't know about because of the damage to the town records is it possible to just take a look at those even just go look at them in your office oh, well what i'll do is i'll i'll I've already, we've already filed them, but what I'll do is I'll make copies of them and put them in your mailbox. I think it would be nice to see Then you're going to have them. In the context of the seawalls. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Bean. I have nothing, sir. Mr. Rodell. Uh, yeah, a good report. And I'd just like to uh, reiterate that this September 11th uh, at the uh, American Legion Post 35, that those guys do an absolutely oh, great yeah. job on that, and that's an extremely moving ceremony, yes, and it, it would be yeah. really beneficial for everybody in town to get out and go to that ceremony yeah. and, and to honor the people that have fallen for us. Right. 6 p.m. Yes, yes, I think that's very appropriate. Okay, um, moving on to old business, the selectmen's goals. And did you want to open this, Mary Louise? Yes, what are we doing? We've got a whole list. We've got pages of stuff here. We, what are, are we discarding? Are we adding? Did are you, we accomplishing? Uh, do you want to, if sure. you've got right I'd here. I'd be happy to. The, the list, uh, the larger list that uh, we've supplied the board before, uh, we're moving forward on those. Many of those have been accomplished. Uh, I'm tracking them for the department heads moving forward to achieve each of those goals. We've made, I think, very good progress. The warrant articles with the paving of public works. I mean, we finally accomplished, I don't know how many years we had toll, those, uh, you know, Fairfield and the other ones that have been on there, they're finally completed. 
Exeter Road has been completed. Uh, I think we're making very good progress on that list of goals. If I can give you an update, uh, I'll put together a form and, well, and send you with the update of where I, we're at on those. I know I've had questions from the public on, on what this, for example, uh, identify the number of selectmen committees and ensure all are properly staffed and operating under approved guidelines. I have been kind of waiting for that so we can bring people in. We're, we're five months yep. into this year. And then the uh, number six, discuss pursuing legislative and town meeting approval to borrow from the town trust fund. Can we drop that after our conversation with the... Uh yeah, I want a piece of that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, well... we'll uh, yeah, we don't, we don't need to be dropping anything from anything right now. Okay, well, let her discuss her about the goals and then we're going to move on to you. Well, I'm just saying I'd like to be able to go through these and if some are no longer relevant, and also I have started a, a list of... Uh, suggested warrant articles that at some point in time we need to review. We need to have the ducks in a row no later than the 1st of October. Time's creeping up on us. We've got a budget thing coming up and we've got, we've <clears throat> got to make decisions here. And we've got a lot of, and, and I appreciate the uh, detail and I've held on to my list, but we need to be sitting down and discussing some of these things and get rid of them or add new ones or confirm the ones that you say are finished. Um, I, I don't like leaving things hanging. So did, what other questions did you have so it won't be hanging? Well, are we going to go through them one by one, or are we going well, to get a report Well, yes, this is your time to, to speak. You want to go through the whole thing one by I just want, uh, Jamie said he's getting things together and telling us what okay, drops off. So do you have anything else to comment about? Well, I'd just about? like to ask, uh, do you, you have anything further? Because you just gave us a little recap. I mean, give you as much detail as you like. I mean, I can give you, I think the best way is to, uh, if I can give you a copy of the report that I'll put together with, um, you know, the dates of accomplishment of where we're at. Some of them are listed as two-third complete, some are complete. Uh, but again, I, I board confidence. We're, we've been going through each of these. This is, to me, the direction yeah. you folks have set us on, and we're moving forward in that way. As you indicated, there are a number of issues that are for the board to discuss. Right. I've talked to the manager, and, and those are things I think you'll be seeing on your agenda in the in the not-too-distant future that yeah. you'll be discussing each one of them. Because However I'm, the board decides to move forward or not with them is up to the board's decision, but not, we'll put it forward to you. The not-too-distant future is like two more meetings this month and then the month of September. That's the not-too-distant future. Well, well, Under public Public Works develop and propose a plan for vehicle inventory, rolling stock to address the vehicles are used for proper functions and improve ongoing maintenance. I have suggested to the manager in conjunction with that that we ask Public Works to color code the vehicle uh, assignments. For example, yellow for the transfer station, purple for the wastewater treatment plant, so that the budget committee and, and ourselves can get a better understanding because they have so many vehicles and they're assigned to so many. it's not just like police vehicles are fired this is a covering a big spectrum of uh of use so i've asked and fred said that they yeah. should be able to do that so that the budget committee can get a better grip as well you have x vehicles for this something else for a sewer and drain just to get a feel for the whole span of what public works uh, vehicles are assigned let me just touch on that for a minute. I, I suspect you'll see a presentation from them with regard to condition, with regard to what's necessary in their direction. Uh, they, they've been putting together one. They previewed it for the manager and I recently. <coughs> I think you'll be happy when you see some of that um, guidance to folks in the community so they know what's going on. And that will be the color code. It will have a copy of the color code. Whether they choose color code or some other method to do it, they're, they're well, mindful of that. At that I want your you know, direction of where you want to go. Yeah. Okay. And... Um, you had, you had, I think you inserted the collect data on the number of mutual aid services received and supplied and stuff. Is that something you're still focusing on? Or? Well, that was one of the, the discussions from the board, mm -hmm. um, and so we added it as one of the goals. That's something that, frankly, has been on a low priority at this point as they're accomplishing their other tasks, but it's something by the end of the year I'm sure they can pull the data together on. Okay. All right, because I would like to either go through this or, or do something so that we can have some type of... Uh, overview, and I will appreciate anything that uh, Jamie comes up with. Mr. Bean. Yeah, uh, I'm very satisfied with the uh, performance of the town employees, town leadership. Uh, we are in the middle of our surge operations. We came off of one heck of a winter. There's been no break for leadership. We've got new department heads. Uh, fire was in here today. We see the high degree and capability 
uh, and to simply start a boat and get a boat three miles off coast and back and perform that is an incredible skill level. And uh, far be it from me, uh, although I did work for a boat club called the Coast Guard for a lot of years out of Portsmouth. Uh, those are highly perishable skills, and uh, Jim speaks very eloquently about how uh, difficult that is, and uh, they're lifesavers. And uh, I don't think it is up for this board to be into the minutia of something as uh, far removed as color coding vehicle maintenance. I have uh, also worked for a gun club uh, and had a high level of uh, maintenance uh, responsibility. Uh, for motor vehicles and uh, engineer assets uh, for a fairly long period of time. And uh, far be it from this board to be telling what highly paid, competent engineer professionals, civil engineers, and departments of public works folks uh, are doing for their uh, maintenance procedures and folders. And it, I would say that if we're color coding things, uh, the next thing I would expect is Barney Rubble or Fred Flintstone to show up to supervise. So uh, I don't want to be bothering our department heads in the middle of this very busy time. And I'm confident your leadership, the assistant town managers and the town managers that we're hitting on all cylinders and we're doing very well and there is no crisis. Thank you. And Mr. Yeah, I would just like to, to say that uh, we, we came up with these goals. Jamie put them all together, sort of made a list, which was great. Mm -hmm. uh, the accomplishment of the goals, I think we can, we can visually see the accomplishment of the goals. When you go down Exeter Road, you can see one right away that's being done. And I, 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 I'm fairly, I'm confident on, on what's happening and on the updating of what we're doing. And I'm going to agree with uh, Selectman Bean that I, I don't believe we should be getting into the minutia of color coding how a vehicle is used. I think we have a, a director of public works who knows his job, who can tell us what the rolling stock is, and I don't think we should be telling him or any department head how to do their job. I think it, we hire people who are competent leaders, comp competent employees, and we allow them to do their job. I spent 36 years in education, and the worst thing in the world was school committees telling teachers how to do their minutia on their job. It's not our place to do that. You hire them, you hire people with expertise, and you allow them to do their job. If, you know, if they're not doing their job, you get rid of them. That's how I feel. Okay, and then I'm going to read these goals just so the people understand. Um, number one is contract negotiations, reach agreement with the various unions on terms for new contracts, underway and ongoing. <clears throat> Become more proactive in communicating with the public with regards to the value of service the town provides across all departments, ongoing. Better communication with the public on the budget and the need for various services. That's always ongoing. Number four is to facilitate a discussion and give direction on bonding a large number of additional infrastructure improvements at one time versus project by project. We're working on that to further that discussion. Five, conduct a non-union salary study identifying any gaps that exist and a plan to address these gaps. It's ongoing. And six, discuss pursuing legislature, le <clears throat> legislative and town meeting approval to borrow from the town trust fund under no interest terms. Current law requires borrowing at prevailing bank rates. Some members feel this is a missed opportunity, so we're going to be, this is ongoing. Seven, discuss and reach consensus on pursuing a zoning change to the southwesterly side of Ashworth Ave from residence BRB to business seasonal BS. Eight, discuss pursuing acquiring the marina area for town ownership. This will allow access to town residents to recreational opportunities along the river and ocean access and the possibility of public-private economic development partnership opportunities. Nine, continue to pursue options to address the impact to taxpayers for, for providing reimbursed, unreimbursed. unreimbursed services to state-owned properties, beach, liquor stores, tolls, etc. That's ongoing and has been for years. Identify the number of selectmen committees, which we already discussed about that. 
uh, Mary Louise brought it up, and that's where is ongoing. Um, one of these I'd like to um, mention about number seven: discuss and reach consensus on pursuing a. No, we meant number eight about discuss pursuing or acquiring the marina area for town ownership. I'm not actually discussing that, but I am going to ask, is there were um, at one time approvals for condominiums there, right? They are approved, sir. Yeah, now have those approvals um, expired? No, they're vested. The utilities were completely installed. The water and sewer infrastructures are there. So the, the original plans are vested forever. Mm -hmm. unless they come in and ask for a change. So there is a plan there that there these people have now. Yes. Okay, so these are some of the things that we could put on uh, the agendas in the future to discuss any of these, but as we see, sure. many of them are ongoing. So any other comments, Mr. Bridal? Well, I, I'd like to say, you know, we, we, we've talked about a number of things here, and I think we all think, uh, we, or most of us feel that uh, we have progressed quite a bit this year. Uh, a, a lot is going on. Our, our public works, our police, our fire have been extremely busy. Uh, you, t you talk about mutual aid. I know I was listening to the radio today, and, and Seabrook's ambulance and Exodus engine were on their way over here for mutual aid because all of our resources were, were, were taxed. So uh, we, get, we use mutual aid a lot. As far as, as public works, uh, we have some highly qualified people down there. We have a new uh, public works director. We have a new assistant public works director. Um, the, the, the present public works director went through one heck of a winter with, with what he had for uh, conditions. I think he can, he can assess what his vehicles are. Um, we, we, we have some extreme conditions in this town where we have a lot of small and narrow streets. So, you know, I've heard many times that, we, you know, we're plowing a lot with, pub, with, with pickup trucks, and quite frankly, because that's what they need uh, in, on those streets. Do I think that they may need some bigger trucks? Absolutely. But that should come from the public works director. Uh, that's what we pay him for. I think uh, uh, if, if we don't listen to him, then why do we bother hiring him? So... Other comments? Mrs. Wolsey. Yes, I have one follow-up. Just the words just about out of your mouth, Mr. Waddell, on dealing with the budget committee and avoiding default budgets and getting more realistic and being up to date and all this stuff. It helps the budget committee, who's not doing this every day, to sit down and have a clear understanding. You have a huge number of vehicles that we're paying for in the Public Works Department. And if the budget committee, I think, can understand better how many vehicles are devoted to each purpose, because you have a huge spectrum of activity in public works, <coughs> how many vehicles are, are, are designated here or there or whatever. I'm not trying to tell the public works director what to do, but I certainly think color coding to segregate the different areas of the department will be a tremendous help to the Municipal Budget Committee when they sit down to look at the Public Works budget. And I do think it is good to try to make it as easy as possible for the Budget Committee members to understand the needs. Other comments, Mr. Uh, I, I just think if Selectman Wolsey was so concerned about the Budget Committee, then she wouldn't have resigned from the representation because she didn't become elected chairman of this board so we can we can talk around this issue all night long but this is time to put on the big boy pants and i am the rep to the budget committee okay. thank you mr waddell anything else no and thank you uh mr sullivan for keeping this all in line and this is another example of the type of thing that you're doing and providing us with support thank, thank you. you i have more under old business okay and this should be okay quick. it's when it's your turn for old business well, I, I thought we were on old you. business already. We are, but it's okay. Mr. Bridal's turn to I talk. have nothing on the old business. Okay. Mrs. Wolseley. Um, Fred, are we taking up the ambulance write-downs at some point in time? We are. I'm working on that now. I've been working on it now for some period okay, of time. because I, I saved my copy. Okay. Yep. So we're not ready to do that yet. I'm planning, I'm hoping that your next meeting uh, 
I will be okay. ready to give you information so you can get prepared to discuss it. I appreciate the effort. It's something we certainly need to look at. Oh, yes. Uh, Article 16, uh, Exeter Road, 320000 uh, Do we Are we near a final cost for that? It cost us approximately 311000 to pave the road. Excellent. So there may be a little bit left over, and that will be just that will just remain in the article. Well, what's going to happen is is an additional cost of uh, four thousand eight hundred dollars to back up and put all the yeah. all the ditch work in, and so on and okay. so forth. So we'll come in That's pretty going much to have, on target. Pretty much on target. No leftovers. Okay, excellent. Um, the H Street, eleven H Street complaint. Are we? Apparently, we had posted that property at some point in time. Are we following up on properties that are posted, properties that are falling apart and and deteriorating? You've already brought up a couple in the past few weeks. Are, how are we tracking these? This these conditions drive neighbors crazy. The the building department, if they're rental property. Uh, tracks them mm -hmm. because they have a rental license for them. The rental mm -hmm. license in that particular property was re revoked. The property was foreclosed by the bank. Right. And we're riding the bank to keep it in good condition, keep it at least locked well, up. you had to board, board it up. Yes. But still, it was a confounded nuisance to that whole neighborhood. But thank you for your effort on that. Um, the trailers, that our trailers that are being trucked to... Um, waste management facilities, wherever the heck they're going. I'm understanding there's been a lot of damage to the rubber flaps on the trailers. Uh, they cost at least $50 each to repair, and all the people have to do is to roll them up to get them out of the way so they're not being shredded. I understand there's $70 a piece, and, they're, a piece. and they're paying for them. I would hope so. Oh, yes. Okay. And I think... Oh, and one more thing, the, the driveway permits. I asked Fred about driveway permits because I had a complaint from one individual who has an existing driveway and is now doing something with the property. Um, and you explained that in the old days, the good old days, the, uh, there, were no, uh, there was no record of where the driveways were going. Some of them are recorded, some of them are not. Right. So at, uh, that got me thinking. We had a total reconstruction of Little River Road and a total replacement of the water line about 2004 or so. So everything was ripped up, including the end of my driveway and all of my neighbors. At that point in time, would that project have uh, recognized the driveways and, and the, because Public Works came and, and connected the ends of the damaged driveways to the roadway. Well, would, would we have a record of that so that people, say, on Little River Road up to Woodland would not have to apply for a new driveway permit? I suspect not. First of all, in 2004, it was a selectman that was in charge of driveway permits oh, and not the planning that board. that was fun. Uh, in 2007, when I arrived, I informed them the statute was changed in 1986 by the general court. And they finally, after two years, enacted driveway regulations, so they didn't start the driveway regulations until 2007. Okay. So we're, we're playing catch-up. Usually what happens, way? well, what happens usually is when they want to make a change to the mm -hmm. driveway or they want to make a change to the property that goes mm -hmm. through planning or zoning or building, mm -hmm. then the driveway permit comes into play and we give them a new driveway permit. Would Public Works have a record of the construction, because it was a total reconstruction of Little River Road from Five Corners up to Woodland? They may. They could document that those were done and... Well, I don't. I don't believe that they documented any driveways ah. in reconstruction. That's generally not what happens. So that's, we'll get yelled at for not having recorded driveways or something. Well, that's not part of the town's obligation. Well, it is when you're forcing people to go for driveway permits when they're doing something. We're not. The legislature is. The legislature. Well, it still applies to us. We have to enforce it. But I appreciate the information on that. Thank you very much, Mr. Bean. No, sir. Mr. Waddell? No old business, sir. Okay. Um, I, uh, for old business, I shared the concerns about the um, what is happening with what we talked about at North Beach and at the other end. Um, you know, they've decided which sides of the street have the signs gone signs up. Signs are up. Uh, both the chief and the deputy chief have been up there talking to people, and, and uh, we haven't had any humongous controversies at this point. Uh, they've worked out the fine-tuning of all of those areas up there, 
everybody seems to be happy we haven't received any complaints, let's put it that way. Uh, and I think the chief and the deputy chief have done a remarkable job of addressing the issues to the people who live there by going up and talking to them. And things seem to be working very well. And what about the, uh, what is the town right of way on a typical street there? Well, the right-of-way layouts on most streets are 40, uh, the total width is 40 feet, some is 50. It depends upon the individual street. Now, some of the residential streets, it's only 30 feet. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to look at, what you have to look at is the original subdivision plan or the original layout plan for the individual houses to see where the individual street widths are. Mm -hmm. Well, what about where, when the people are supposed to park? Are they supposed to park on, on the yards there or in, only on the road? Uh, well, they can park, obviously, on the side of the road where parking is legal, and they can park in the roadway. If they want to park on their own property, they're free to do that. Right. They have a driveway which can't be more than 24 feet in width. Some of these lots, that's almost, that's over half the lot. So all the grass that they have is their yard? Uh, no. Mm -mm. The general, if I can jump in, as a yeah. practical matter from law enforcement point of view, mm -hmm. we, you know, without pulling out the maps and measuring, which is the most accurate way, we generally have always done, use the telephone poles. Right. If ah. you look at a telephone pole, it's got to be in the right of way. Yeah. And, you know, my own property, you know, I, I, I know I mow a four-foot section that, that is outside of the telephone pole to the street. So yeah. I always thought that was my lawn, too. But, uh, you know, my new education, I found that <coughs> it really isn't. So it, the telephone know, poles is a good example. It's a good guide. And yeah. generally what the police, what we're trying to do with what we did was safety was the primary. And that's the thing the deputy and, and the chief have been down there talking to folks. There's been some adjustments over, you know, that's my lawn. That's we're not trying to capture that whole area. We're still mm -hmm. trying to stay to the paved portion of the road is where we want people to right. park. Yeah. And we know that that's a, a big stress point. Um, the intention is park on that. The challenge for law enforcement, for the guys enforcing it becomes when that whole frontage is paved and their folks have been used to that being their driveway, mm -hmm. which is the entire length, those are some of the more challenging things and they're trying to work their way through it. Our yeah. intention of the ordinance is parking on the paved portion of the town roadway on one side so that we can get through. Not to capture all the front lawns and mm -hmm. all the others, that's not it. But folks generally should know the right of way is, and it's hard for us to enforce, when the right of way is still part of the quote public way. Yeah, because there's been a brisk buying of flower pots. Yeah. Yeah, down there yeah. and yeah, people complaining about it too and, and again we went through this as you recall many years ago and i'm when talking about the other neighbors I, I understood and when we went through a very similar thing when we reconstructed the road down on the main beach as you recall there were some really hard conversations green about line. Well, the green line was one but also when we rebuilt ashworth avenue yeah. of a number of things that we all folks always thought was their property really wasn't we're not looking to go there to capture that. We're just trying to make it safe for the road. And that's what the chief and the deputy have been doing now. And I think your uh, comparison to the telephone poles is a good one. It's and practical. It's yeah. practical. Yeah. Thank you. Rick, one, one yeah? Could uh, we just follow up and see if that sign was put up on board instead of the 20 mile an hour sign? Yeah, we follow okay. up. We'll take a look yeah. 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 Um, did anyone else have any discussions about the North Beach or... And has there been any other stuff going about South Beach or the no, Southern No, we've received uh, two complaints with regards to not doing enough on the South Beach. As you know, we did yeah. not go into uh, White Island and take a look at those issues. Uh, we are starting to look at some of those issues now simply because we received a couple of complaints Good. from people Good. that they've actually... In some areas, they've actually paved over the entire sidewalk right up to their property line, and they're parking multiple cars in there, which is a problem. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, we, we need to take a careful look at what's going on there. Um, it's going to take a while to do that. And I understand that with the death of Mr. McGurk, that the, um, there was a postponement of the Real Estate Lane Commission. Yes, that's correct. And is that been, is going to be rescheduled? It has been rescheduled. I don't know what the posting is. It's upstairs, uh, oh, okay. and it will be coming up. They will be doing a new posting, I believe, to okay, great more people. Thank you. Um, any other old business? No, everyone said. So moving on to new business. Number one is amendment to Chapter 805, Vehicles and Traffic Article 6, Fire Lanes. Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, there 
was a misprint in the uh, in the ordinance dealing with the fire lane in front of the shop and save supermarket so we have corrected that so it was in proper language and it meets the same requirements as the other ordinances and this is just this is a fix it's a uh, it's a minor change to the uh, the ordinance itself but it doesn't change any parameters so a motion for that yes i'll make a motion that we uh Correct the uh, fire lanes. I'll second it. As presented. All those in favor? Unanimous. Number two is amendment to Chapter 718 Purchasing part, uh, Policy Article 1. Mr. Chairman, there is a provision in RSA 44716, which we thought we had addressed pretty well in the, in the, uh, the purchasing ordinance. Um, but going back and reading it, and in hindsight, with all of the things that we have gone through in the last few years and doing bids and so forth, we wanted to make it very clear by putting this amendment in the, in the purchasing ordinance that um, for the bids for the construction, repair, or rebuilding of public buildings, public highways, bridges, or other public works in excess of $35,000 shall, as a condition precedent to the execution of the contract to require the posting of security by bond or otherwise in an amount equal to at least 100% of mm -hmm. the contract price. That's yep. statutory. We thought we had it covered well in the, in the, in the ordinance and then uh, we've had some questions about it from bidders and, and we'd just like to get the exact wording of the statute in there so there's no question. Yeah, that's good. I'll so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. And number three, authorization to withdraw from DPW equipment capital reserve funds for two vehicle purchases in the amount of forty thousand thirty-six dollars. That's what we approved last meeting. They were, and, and the money was slated to come out of that particular account. There's currently forty-three thousand six hundred and twenty-one dollars and fifty-four cents in that account. We haven't been replenishing it lately. I'll make the the motion that we would go with the authorization to withdraw the I'll second that's the sewer and drain articles um, mm -hmm. vehicles yes okay yep. all those in favor unanimous uh, number four street name request timber swamp road sweat drive what's this about? mr. chairman the uh, the planning board had uh, completed a subdivision approval for the Dunbar's on Timber Swamp Road, and one of the requirements is that they had to have a name for a street. Captain Sweat was killed in one of our colonial wars. We're running out of names, so um, they had picked that name. They liked it, Sweat Drive, and and uh, they need the selectman's permission to go ahead and put that on there so they can complete their three-lot subdivision for their family. So moved. Second it. I, I have a question yes. on that. I... I was given to understand that the they have a single family house now there. Is was that approved? I know Mr. Dunbar had his shop and so forth over there, but I had someone say they didn't think that that that, that was approved for a residence. His, I don't. I, his house has been there for a number of years. Been years. there a long time. His, the private residence has been there for <coughs> yeah, 15 years anyway. Yeah. He has two commercial properties. I know that. That and then his proposed subdivision. Okay. Right. okay. So I think that's, that's fine. They went through that pretty thoroughly with the planning board. Okay. Good. All Thank those you. in favor? Unanimous. Quickly while we're talking on this, we know the list is getting fairly short. Short on, on <laughs> the names. Left, yeah. um, maybe we ought to take a look at that at some point. Yes. Of, of how we come up with the, the names. I know we've We've pretty much exhausted it. Exhausted the resources yeah. we had, and right. I think we ought to look at it so that people, when they're when they're proposing a subdivision, at least have something that they can pick from. Yeah. Okay. We have a very Other, short list left. Okay. And yes, we need to do something to uh, provide relief. Other new business. You can do bridal, Waddell, well. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, any other Ball new business? Set, thank you, Mrs. Wolseley. That's new business, Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Oh. Negative. Wait, one quick one. Fred, That yeah. I noticed when I was heading south a couple of days ago, Dearborn Avenue, the street sign is almost unreadable. When you're on Anne's Lane and you're making a right to get down Dearborn, 
this the it's an old sign it's a long sign and it's it's on oh. the telephone pole yeah and you can see d for dearborn and the other letters are almost indistinguishable and that I was know. out on that was out on uh, ann's yeah okay. yes it's on the ann's lane end not the high street end but i looked at it, i said what the heck is that silly thing because i haven't paid much attention to it but it's a really big long sign going D E A R only the uh, rest of the letters are really tiny maybe we could get something you can read better you must have a chauffeur in order to see everything that you see no, we'll have it replaced with a, a current federal <laughs> regulatory sign i'm uh, i'm all over the place oh, every I can day tell. um any closing comments motion to adjourn at 2030 closing comment uh on um August 17th, 2.30, up at the State House, there is a hearing on rooms and meals tax. Yes. And uh, I think I would be able to go. I suggested to Nancy that if somebody you'd go. be a likely person. Okay, and I'm pretty sure I'm not working that day, so what, but if I'm working, I'll get in touch with somebody else, Rusty or somebody, and see if somebody can go. Okay, great. So that's, that's August 17th at 2.30 in LOB 103, all right? Okay, Rooms thank you. Meals. That will okay. be great. They'll roll out the red carpet for you. Sure. And we have a motion at what time? 20.30. A second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thank you.